that we all know in polit from our decision making is what uh, changes the fate of the patient not the surgical skills here but understanding the situation that the patient is in and making a decision what has to be done or that determines whether the patient is going to live or is going to die it doesn't matter how great a femur nailing we can do or how great a stabilizer resuscitation we can do if the patient doesn't survive uh, at the end of surgery right so that's uh, the skills that we need to uh, learn of when to do what to do what not to do also right so let's uh, understand two terms to this sort of polytrauma more theoretical but equally important when you really come across a patient now understand that a true polytrauma patient you might see say one in a year okay, who really really is dependent on your decision making but at that time if you take the proper uh, decision he is going to live so that is uh, It's like a total thing for that time, right? So that's how we need to think it. Uh, and like told, this is not from surgical points at all. The polytrauma is a complex situation. We can have any types of subtypes of fractures, and treatment of that is pretty simple. But as a whole, uh, the patient is what we need to understand. So let's see what the definition is. What's the pathophysiology behind this uh, polytrauma? Uh, and there are a lot of terms associated with polytrauma: a rate of tear. Early, I mean, damage control, orthopedic damage control, nailing, early appropriate care. There are a few others, but we will go through them and see uh, what is each of these, why are these thought about, and how it has to be. Right. So, if you think of polytrauma, the biggest uh, issue with polytrauma is that it kills. Patient with polytrauma minimum might not even reach the hospital. He might might be dead by the time he reaches the hospital. Most of the time, it is immediate death. And the worst part is it is almost always secondary to a high velocity injury, road traffic accident. So it affects the younger generation. Now, unlike say a fracture neck of femur, domestic cause, it affects the older generation. This affects the younger generation, and he or she may be the only uh, uh, working. Uh, member of the family, right? So the entire family uh, resources are wiped out. So that's how we need to understand this concept. So we all know that uh, after an injury, there are three peaks of death. That means chances are increased in these three times in the type of injury. One is immediate death. Number two is early death, and number three is late death. Immediate death means the patient has no chance of um, getting any help. So this is a major, major injury. Uh, usually, like a mid-ischemic injury, heart dissection, immediate cardiac injury, all those things. Where uh, whether the doctor is available or not, it is not not possible uh, for this patient to survive. Early death is where the patient does survive for two hours, and if gets an appropriate line of treatment, there are high chances he is going to make. It. High chances he will arrive at the end of this uh, time and. Uh, that is totally dependent on the way we treat them. This is where uh, we, as uh, treating physicians or surgeons, can make a difference. Late death is simply often of course uh, because of sepsis, secondary to the injury and the treatment that we have done. Okay, so here also we can play a role. But in a polytrauma situation, it's the early death we are trying to prevent. Late death uh, also, of course. If we take good decisions, it prevents both early death as well as late death. So, what is the definition now? Uh, the definition of polytrauma is controversial. Why controversial? It's not. There is a perfect definition for polytrauma, but 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 this definition is not seen in many of the books that we read. Okay, this definition is a working definition as. Agreed upon by the international uh, group of surgeons who are working on trauma, and uh, many are aware of that. But the books that we read are still not updated. That and uh, uh, even some of the notes that we read are not updated. That. That's why we find it controversial. Now that's why we included most of them. Now these definitions are outdated. Like two injuries have to be there. One is a bone, and one more, one more system like a CNS, um, a thorax, abdomen, pelvis. Because the initial uh, definition that there are two systems involved, one bone and one uh, system, then it can be considered polytrauma. The old definition, not 
truly uh, agreeable today. The other, other definition is two or more injuries where one of them is potentially life threatening. This was also there for a certain set of time, but not true in certain day uh, uh, explanations. And the other definition is where we get in a scoring system and tell that if there are two or more injuries, where injury severity score is more than 15, it can be called polyphony. Now, even this is not true as of today. Okay. So, depending on uh, what is given in your books and what your professors um, uh, want you to tell, I think you can tell one of these. But the real definition will come to that. So, what is the name uh, injury severity score and abbreviated injury score? Now, in 1971, uh, this was the score. Now, this scoring was actually not from an orthopedic treatment point of view. This scoring was uh, for uh, motor vehicle accidents, for disabilities, and for compensation to import. Okay. So, it actually doesn't tell you too much from treatment point of view. Remember that. Now, uh, entire body can be divided into seven regions uh, external. At the base, neck, thorax, abdomen, pelvis, spine, and extremities, and each region, what are all the different injuries that are there? The maximum uh, injury in that particular region is given a score, and then you uh, you can calculate the score. Okay, so we have this one to six minor, moderate, severe. I mean, minor, moderate, serious, severe, critical, and unsurvivable, and uh, a scoring is done. And then, if you do not know the score, or uh, then it is given as nine points or unknown. So, in 1974, in this score by Baker et al., they told, and what was done was uh, take two, whichever two worst regions are there of the score, take them, wire them, and uh, you add them. So, if the maximum score, the maximum score in this particular thing can be 75. If any one area is six, now what was six? Remember that six was the most grievous injury that could happen, okay? Then automatically the injury severity score becomes 75. Uh, and then they did uh, what is the legal damage 50. So uh, age for uh, uh, age 15 to 44, even if the score is 40, that means 50% of these people will die. Similarly, uh, if you see that when there is an elderly patient, the physiological results are much lesser. Even if the score is 20, then chances of their death is 35. And from 50 to 60 to 50. So as you can see, all this scoring is not from treatment perspective, but from compensation that uh, motor vehicle accident survivor needs to get survivor or whatever the, the, the person who's involved in that needs to get in a place. Okay. Now this was used in the definitions and definitely we as we can understand since it doesn't dictate the treatment, it should be using those definitions definitely. Okay. Then comes the new injury severity score, which was in 1997. Now what is the rational? The rational was in the injury severity score, uh, the, the two regions were taken. Now for example, Intra abdominal patient has an abdominal injury. He has both his liver and his spleen gone, for example, and both are bad. Now, uh, what happens was uh, in the original uh, scoring system, we can take either the liver or the spleen because both of them come under the same region, which is abdomen, and we can do the score. Now, each of these have uh, additive effect. Now, if both the liver and the spleen are involved, that definitely means the chances are much, much worse than having any one of these, right? But the old score did not take into consideration that, whereas the new injury severity score, it tells us that if the patient has two or more injuries even in the same region, then you can individually score both and square them in that. Okay. So, slight subtle difference, but once again, uh, not from treatment perspective, only for compensation point of view. So, if that is the case, then what is the current definition of the polytrauma? This is a very, very simple definition. Yeah. Okay, this is uh, the consensus paper. Almost all uh, 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 leading trauma surgeons, uh, leading polytrauma across the world, uh, were part of it. They have come to a standing working definition. Okay, this is published in 2014. Very well accepted now. This is simple that we have two injuries that are greater or equal to three on the abbreviated injury score. That means uh, any to anywhere in the body. Remember again, this in the current definition, there doesn't need to be involvement of a board. Okay, so it is not like all the previous definitions which told us that there has to be a bone involvement. But in current definition, bones need not be involved. If the patient has head injury with the chest injury with the, having all these parameters, it is very well can be classified as a polytrauma. Okay. 
So please, the three score or more on M. Abbreviated, you see that.